Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. God has established the world, and God's realm will never be shaken. God has been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Here and now, in the splendor and mystery of worship, God welcomes us home. God has been our dwelling place, our home, and our peace, even in times of uncertainty, in times of wilderness wandering. God goes with us, and peace is ever ours to share. Let us greet one another with a socially distanced sign of the peace of Christ. Gathered in God's name round the living world, gathered as one family in the name of I just can't hold it in any longer. I am so happy, so happy to be worshiping with you today. <laughs> I am so glad to see you. Old friends, longtime friends, first time visitors here worshiping in person and church family tuning in at home. And those of you from all around the world putting your names in the chat, welcome. Welcome to Old South Church in Boston. Welcome to our worship this morning, which is all the more pleasing to God because you are here in all your beautiful diversity. Gay and straight, believer and doubter, the young and the old, the shy and the bold, welcome. Welcome to worship. Please take a moment to sign our friendship pad in the pews or online. Give us the chance to show you the hospitality we are known for. And while you're at it, be sure to check out the announcements in your bulletin this morning where you can learn more about today's forum discussion on the second floor after worship, the mayoral forum with the Greater Boston Interfaith Organization this Wednesday night at 7, and next Sunday's Scared for Good Halloween concert in loving memory of our own Harry Huff and so much more. There are so many ways to get involved in the life of this amazing community. But now, let us turn our hearts and minds to the beauty of holiness. Let us worship God together. Good morning, everybody. 
I'm Pastor Jess, and today I'm excited to talk to you about prayer. Do you know what prayer is? That's right. Prayer is what we do when we talk to God. There are all kinds of different ways for us to pray. We might like to say the same thing every time we pray, or we might like to use different words every time. Some of us like to pray in different languages, like English, or Latin, or Hebrew, or Arabic. It's okay to use any words you want, even no words, when you pray to God. God loves you and wants you to share how you feel. You can tell God anything. We can also pray with our bodies. Some of us like to draw a cross on our bodies. Some of us like to kneel when we pray. I like to hold my hands apart and look up while I pray. We can hold hands with others when it's safe to, and some people like to pray spinning. You can use your voice and your body to tell God how you're feeling. Sometimes sharing our feelings is hard, but God always wants to hear them. Thanks for sharing this time with me to talk about prayer. Let's say one final prayer together. Dear God, thanks for teaching us how to pray. Thank you for listening to our feelings, even if we don't always understand them. Stay by our side, God, and remind us that we can do anything. And we all say, Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives, and everyone who searches, finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts set our spirits on fire for you, O God, for you are our rock and redeemer. Amen. When Jesus talks about prayer, he makes it seem quite easy. He said things like, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. He said, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do. And he said, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find, knock, and the door shall be opened to you. It sounds simple enough, ask 
Seek, knock, then God will answer and make things roll our way. But we know that's not how it ends up. There was a little boy who wanted a new bicycle for Christmas. So weeks before the holiday, he started praying for it every single night. But Christmas came, and there was no bike. The boy's birthday was late January, so he continued to pray every single night for that bicycle, and much to his surprise, he did not get a bike for his birthday. So one night, the boy snuck out of his house, went down the street to his local church. He went inside, walked up to the statue of the Virgin Mary, took it off its pedestal, and stuffed it under his blanket at home. And the next morning, as the pastor was opening up the church, he found a note on the altar that said, Dear Jesus, give me that bike or you will never see your mother again. <laughs> Amen. I was not that boy. <laughs> we know about unanswered prayers. Not prayers for bikes, or good weather, or red socks. Real unanswered prayers. And this sanctuary has been full of them. Prayers for friends that are sick and do not get better. Prayers for marriages that do not heal. Prayers for nations that are still ravaged by war. Prayers for jobs that do not hire. Prayers for relief from a pandemic that just won't end. And prayers for answers that do not come. Show of hands, and I'm inviting you, you're in church, do not be shy. Who has prayed and felt like you haven't received the result expected? It's an impressive club. But I've got good news. We are in good company. The Bible is filled with disappointment and unmet expectations. Its people know the anguish of unanswered prayer. Moses prayed that he would get to enter the promised land after leading his people for 40 years, and yet he did not. King David fasted and prayed for seven days that his son, who was dying, would live, and yet he died. The prophet Jeremiah prayed that Jerusalem would not be destroyed, and yet the Babylonians wiped the city out. And Jesus, Jesus wept, and he prayed that God would relieve him of the pain and the agony of death, and yet he was crucified. Unanswered prayer is not a new thing. It is not a modern phenomenon. And still, it stumps us. It hurts us. It leaves us wanting and despairing and angry and lost. Unanswered prayer creates a huge crisis of faith. It puts honest believers in a bind between whether God failed or we did. And most of us, believing it unfaithful to fault God, might blame ourselves instead. We must not have had enough faith, or we weren't good enough, or we didn't have enough people praying alongside us, or we just didn't say the right words or pray in the right way. But none of that is true. The truth is, our wondering about unanswered prayer is often a misunderstanding of what prayer actually is. Prayer is more than asking for things, of course. Prayer is praise. It's thanksgiving. It's conversation. Prayer is questioning. It's arguing. It's lamenting. Prayer is all of these things and more. But prayer is also, and perhaps fundamentally, about asking God for what we most need and desire, and asking God shamelessly. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with asking God for whatever it is we need, whether it's healing, or peace, or answers. 
Because asking affirms our fundamental dependence on God. We cannot do this alone. We are not enough. We need God. We depend on our God for mercy and goodness and hope. And when we ask God for something in prayer, we acknowledge both our need for God and God's ultimate goodness. But God is not a short order cook. Prayers, prayers which ask for something, are not guaranteed the result we hope for, not even guaranteed an answer. Ask, seek, knock, Jesus said, but there is no promise we will get the exact outcome we ask for, no assurance that we will get everything we prayed for. Unanswered prayers are going to happen. So why pray? Why go through the exercise? Why waste the time? First, because Jesus did it. Jesus prayed and he prayed regularly. Jesus didn't just pray as an example for us, but because he really, really needed to. He depended on it. He prayed before his baptism. He prayed before he fed the 5,000 and before the miracles. He prayed on the mountain and in the boat and in the garden. He prayed with grief at the tomb of his friend Lazarus. Jesus prayed. So if Jesus Christ, the Son of God, felt the need to pray, then we should too. But perhaps even more so, we pray because God asks us to, and because it's good for us. When we pray, we acknowledge a desire to have God in our lives. And in reality, that means it's less about what we want and more about what God wants. Us, our attention, our honesty, and our deep desires. God wants us to be in conversation, not to give us everything we ask for, but to be with us, alongside us, in our struggle, in our dashed hopes, in our anguish, and even in our pain. Prayer is not a means of removing the unknown and unpredictable from our lives. Instead, prayer is a way of laying the unknown and unpredictable before our God. And God, in turn, promises to shoulder the anxiety and strife of the unknown alongside us. So yes, unanswered prayers are going to happen. And they are deeply frustrating and they are complicated. They lead to more questions than answers, more unease and doubt than ease and certainty. But one thing is certain. In our prayer, we are not alone. God prays with us. And for that, we say, Amen.
Somebody say amen. amen. God be with you. May the peace of Christ dwell in your hearts. Let us pray. You may be seated. Gracious God, it is with awe that we gather in your holy presence. It is with wonder that we contemplate the span of eternity and the purposes of heaven. It is with gratitude and great relief that, receive, that we receive the mystery of your love for us. Gracious God, we come before you full of words, full of thoughts, full of the day's news and the day's needs. Yet we gather in hushed silence, in stillness, in full expectation that we and you might find the words or the music or the silence to bridge the distance between us, between your holiness and our frail mortality. We bring first and foremost our high thanksgiving that although our faith has faltered and our loyalty wavered under the whims and pressures of the world, still you have sought us out. Still you have been our rock, our stay, our fortress, our might, our light, our heart, our home. In our indifference, you have been our conscience. In our hopelessness, you have been our surprise. In our brokenness, you have been healer and helper. O oh, gracious God, you who are our peace and our power, we lift our intercessions to you. We pray for a world torn and bruised by violence, for landless refugees, for those caught up in the throes of addiction, for soldiers and civilians in war-torn lands, for the hungry and the helpless, for our nation so divided, so angry and bruised, for the planet imperiled and fragile, for the lonely and troubled of soul, for those tried by temptation or baffled by difficulty, for those whose days are long and slow, for those who are too busy and for whom time is little more than commodity. We pray for those for whom the light of life has gone out in the darkness of death, and for those who light up our lives with their joy, their youth, or their hopefulness. And do all these with the strength to bear the burdens life bestows. In a world of confused darkness, grant us enough light for each day's walking. It is in silence now that we each pray our own prayers and lift to you before the throne of grace our own thanksgivings. And finally, in the very words that Jesus himself has taught us, we are bold to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
towards me your tender mercies I see day after day forever faithful towards me You're always providing for me
Amen. Amen. Old South Gospel Choir, you sing like you know. Oh. The Lord is good, the psalmist writes. Steadfast, God's steadfast love endures forever and their faithfulness to all generations. One of the elements I find most interesting about our shared faith, friends, is the invitation extended to us by Christ to be in complex, abiding, intimate relationship with him. Our giving, our generosity, isn't a faith-based quid pro quo. We give because we love. And we give because we recognize that sustaining God's church and building the kingdom is one of the ways in which we live into our love and relationship with God. If I believe that you are made in the image of God just like I am, then I'll do whatever I can to care for you just like I would care for myself. And if we believe that our resource makes a difference for us, let us offer our resource so that we can make a difference for others. Siblings and loved ones, now is the moment when we bring to Christ's table our offering. Whether you give in the plates that are coming around, via the QR code or via text, or visit oldsouth.org slash donate, let us prepare to joyfully give and gratefully receive the gifts of God for the people of God.
Will you pray with me? God, who knows and loves us, we thank you for the capacity and resource to render to you what is yours. Take these, our offerings, and use them to have your way in our world. We offer you what we have, what we can, what we are. In the name of Jesus, amen. Following the postlude this morning, you are invited to take a guided tour of this marvelous sanctuary. You can meet your, meet your guide right here at the base of the pulpit near the flowers. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Pray always. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, and let the church say, Amen. <laughs> 